Now, after 13 Makki Suras, we come to the Madani Suras of this group, and they are three. After a very long pause, you know, we had four in the very beginning, Bakara, Ali Imran, Nisa, Maida. Then two, Anfal, and Toba. Then very far off, one, Surat nur Then another one, after eight Suras, Surat al -Ahzab. Now we come to three Suras, Surat Muhammad, and then Surat al fatih Surat Al-Hujarat. It's comparatively a smaller surah, but very profound. It discusses with the fundamentals of Islamic polity. What are the fundamentals of Islamic society, Islamic state? How to strengthen, keep it strengthened? How to avoid the schisms and conflicts? And what is the basis of membership of its Muslim society and what's the basis of citizenship of an Islamic state? So very fundamental issues are, is, are discussed in this surah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadai allahi wa rasulai. Oh, you who believe, don't put yourself ahead of Allah and His Messenger. You have to keep behind them. They have set a limit. Don't cross the limit. Tilka hududullah, fala ta'taduha, fala taqrabuha. Keep behind. And fear Allah, wa taqullah. Inna Allah samir alim, where really Allah is listening everything and knowing everything. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fa'u aswatin nabi. Oh you who believe, don't raise your voices above the Prophet's voice. Because it is disrespectful. The constitutional basis of Islamic society and state is that sovereignty belongs to Allah and the commands of Allah and Messenger will be supreme. No legislation can be done repugnant to the Quran and the Sunnah. This is the constitutional basis. But the basis of the solidarity of the Ummah, homogeneity of the Ummah, is the respect and love of Muhammad Just like you know, circle, the circle has a center. Center of this polity and, and society is Muhammad While the circumference of the circle, these are the commandments of Allah and His Messenger. You have to remain within this circle. If you have seen, you have gone out of the pain of Islam. But to keep yourself united, homogeneous, you have to have tie yourself with the center. And center is the personality of Muhammad Respect him. Love him and never be disrespectful to him, even unintentionally. Don't raise your voices over the voice of the Prophet. And don't be loud in your speech to him as you are loud to one another. Because in this case there is a danger that all your good deeds are rendered fruitless or rewardless. This is such a big thing. This respect to Muhammad will deprive you of all the reward, all the reward of all your deeds that you have earned up till now. In the Lazina Yahuduna Swatah with the Rasulullah, verily those people who keep their voices low before the Messenger of Allah. They are the people whose hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested for piety. Now taqwa will be in these hearts. For them is the forgiveness and a very mighty reward. Verily, those who come and call out for you from behind the private apartments, there was a mosque and small hujras apartments, for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Now the Prophet is there in some hujra, maybe of Hazrat Aisha or Hazrat Hafsa, and somebody, Bedouin, Arab, comes from outside, and he calls, Oh Muhammad, Akhruj Lena, come out, I want to meet you. Now this is disrespectful. 
Don't do this with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inna ladina yunaduna kabi warai hujurat. Verily, those who call out to you from behind the private apartments, aksarhum la yaqilun. Most of them don't have any sense because they are the Bedouins. They are coming from outside. They are the desert dwellers. They are not cultured. They are not civilized. That is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the next ayah. Allah forgives them, but in the future they must be careful. Walau anhum sabaru, if they had waited, hatta takhru jailayim, till that time that you would have yourself come out. You actually it was his timetable when he is to come out, when he has to take rest. So according to your own timings, if they should have waited, that you you come out yourself. Lakana khair Allahum, this would have been much better for them. Allah is Ghafur Rahim, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Because they didn't mean the insult, but only because they were uncivilized, uncultured people, they were doing that. So there is the advice: don't do it again. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is not going to bring you to the book and punish you. Ya yu Allahi na amanu in jaku fasikum bi nabi in fatabiyan wo. Oh, you believe if some unrighteous person comes to you with a very important news. Then verify it. Anta tusimu kaumum be jahalat in lest you should afflict a people in ignorance. Fatusmehu ala ma fal tum nadimin, and then you have to become remorseful on what you did. Somebody says, "Oh, that tribe is preparing to invade you, and you preempt and go and attack them because the news had come that they were preparing to attack, and then it might be." That it came to the knowledge that the news was this was a rumor, wrong rumor. So what will be the result? You will be remorseful. You will be blamed. So when some, if some person who is very pious, dependable, if Abu Bakr brings some news, there is no need of verification. Now the Allah Taala knows. But if some person who is not righteous, if he is bringing to you some news, then verify them before you take any step. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And it, let it be known to you that within, amongst you is the messenger of Allah. What does it mean? He is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, ibn Abdul Muttalib, yes. But his real position is he is Muhammad ar-Rasool Allah. Don't take him to be a man like the other men. Any Qarshi, a Qarshi like other Qarshis. A Hashmi like other Hashmi, Hashmites. No, no. The real position which you should keep in front of you, in your mind, always that he is the messenger of Allah. You know this is very really important because for Aisha رضي الله عنها, Muhammad was the husband, but at the same time he was the messenger of Allah. She must have this position before her mind, before that position of husband and wife. In the same way, Abu Bakr was father-in-law of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What does it mean? Muhammad was like a son to him, son-in-law. But no, 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 no. He is Rasulullah. So you keep this position of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in view. Walamu an nafikum Rasulullah. It should be known to you that you have amongst you the messenger of Allah. Now you tell your kumfi kasiri min amri laadit tum. If he were to obey you in many matter, you would certainly be in trouble. Don't don't want that your opinion he should take. No, no, you should always wait. What is his opinion? Don't force upon him your opinions. You should also wait so that his opinion comes forward. Walakin Allah habba bailekum iliman. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made iman, faith, very beautiful in your hearts. Bazayana hu fi kulu bekum. He made it very beautiful, and it is endeared to you. Wa karraha ilaykum al kufra wal fusuka wal isyan, and he has made hateful to you the disbelief, the wickedness, and the disobedience. Ulai kahum rashidun. Verily, they are the rightly guided. This is the word rashidun. Al khulafaur rashidun, the four pious caliphs, and all the sahaba are rashidun. Ulai kahum rashidun. This is about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَةً and this is the bounty from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the blessing. والله عليم الحكيم he is the knower the wise. now another instruction. فَإِنْ تَعْفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَلُوا if two parties two groups from among the Muslims Muslims believers they fight with each other. anyhow they are human beings. There can be differences, there can be conflicts, and these can go to the level of fighting. But now what is the instruction? Fast lehu baina huma. Number one, make peace between them. No indifference. Let them settle their affairs themselves. What to me? No, 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 no. It's, it's your duty. Make peace between them. Fine bagat eh da huma al-ukhra. And now if what someone is doing wrong to the other, now you have to fight against that, that, that group which is transgressing. Hatta tafiya ila amrillah. Till it reverts to the Allah's command, to the command of Allah. Faiza fat. When it reverts, fast lehu baina huma bil adl. Then again make a treaty between them, peace between them, with justice. Wa aqsitu. And be equitable. Surely Allah loves the equitables. In Allah you have will muktatin. Now this is the law, this is the rule. No indifference. If there is a conflict in the ummah, what's the result? The total strength, collective strength of the ummah is weakened. This ummah has to perform the biggest mission that has been assigned to it. For that, it should be strong, unified, unity, united. So whenever there is some conflict, what you say, nip the evil in the bud. Stop it here, there, and then. Try to make the peace, and if somebody, some group is transgressing, then now it is not a matter between these two groups. It is as if that group is challenging the whole ummah. Now the whole ummah should come and fight against it. In the mal mu'minuna ikhwatun, verily, all the mu'mins, all the believers are brothers to each other. Fast lehu baina khawaykum. So you should make peace between your two brothers. But taqullah al ala kum turhabun. And have the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, so that you should be shown mercy. Ya ayyuh aladin amanu. Now there are six commandments. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Three in one ayah. Three in one ayah. These are the things, although they appear to be very trifles, very small things, but these things, you know, sometimes break the hearts of the people. And you know, the bond of love is broken. And some seeds of enmity are sown. What are those? Ya yu nadina manu la yasr qawmin min qawmin. Oh, you who believe, don't scoff at another people. Asa an yakunu khairam minhu. Maybe that they are better than them. You are laughing at a person, at a Muslim, at a Muslim brother. Maybe in the eyes of Allah, he is more respectful. And you are mocking at him. Maybe he's hurt. If he's hurt, now that seed of enmity is sown in his heart. Well, on his own, min the sign. In the same way, no woman should scoff at and laugh at other women. Asa yakunna khairam in hunna. They should think that's possible that though they are better than them. Well, I tell me, zoo and fusakum. Don't defame each other. وَلَا تَنَابَدُوا بِلَا الْقَابِ And don't revile each other with nicknames which they don't like. بَيْسُ الْإِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ Very evil is even, every evil is even a bad name after true faith. When you have become moments, now these things are very bad. You may say, I don't mean, I didn't mean it. But why did you say it? It doesn't become of a truly believing Muslim to do these things. Because they can sometimes injure the feelings of the person. And that will be a rift in the ummah. If two Muslims, they are displeased with each other, the, the bond of love is weakened somehow, well, the weakness goes to the total strength of the ummah. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ Whosoever... Don't repent and give up these things. Verily, then they are the evildoers. 
Now, another three things. Oh, you who believe, avoid much of suspicion. Without any reason, you suspect that he, this person is an enemy of me. He's not a well-wisher. He is an evil wisher for me. No. Do you have any proof? No. In the Bible, the next one, verily, some of the suspicions become a sin. Don't spy on each other. Don't backbite one another. Will any one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? Now why this similitude? When your brother is dead, he can't defend himself. You can cut away any piece of flesh from his body. When a brother is not present and you are backbiting, you are saying something bad about him. He is not there. He cannot defend himself. Maybe you are wrong. Maybe the information that reached you is wrong. Maybe you were under some wrong notion and impression. Had he been present here, he could defend his honor. So there is a similarity between these two things. Will any one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? So this you abhor. But backbiting, you go on doing. Although at the moral level, it's the same thing as eating the flesh of a dead brother. Inna Allah tawabu taqullah and have fear of Allah. Verily, Allah is relenting and merciful. That is, He accepts rep repentances. Ya yuhnaasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakarim wa unsa. Now, this Muslim society and Muslim state. What is its relationship with the rest of humanity? On the two bases. Here, Ya Yuhan Nas, note, five times in this small surah, Ya Yuhan Lazin Amanu, Ya Yuhan Lazin Amanu, Ya Yuhan Lazin Amanu, Ya Yuhan Lazin Amanu, small surah. Five times this address, oh you who believe. But now, Ya Yuhan Nas, why? Now the things which are being discussed in this ayah, they are common to all human beings, all mankind. Whether they are Muslims or Kafirs. Ya you are Nas, O mankind, inna khalaknakum. We have created you all. Means the Karim or Unsa. From one male and one female. Adam and Eve. Wajalnakum shuba wa kabai lalitarafu. And then we have made you into nations and tribes so that you can recognize each other, know each other. He belongs to that tribe, he belongs to that tribe. When you see somebody and see from the distance, you say, he is a Chinese. Now his features are different, his color of skin is different. So you recognize him. He is Chinese. And this fellow who is coming, he is some African from some, you know, black country and so on. Now you have the knowledge of their background, historical background, their geographical background. All these things are with you. So all these differences that he has made in your colors, in your features, and divided you into tribes and nations. The purpose is that you can, you should be able to recognize each other. You know, if there are two twin brothers, sometimes it becomes difficult to identify one from the other, to recognize one from the other. Had all the human beings, you know, the same, if they had the same features, the same color, absolutely equal, how could, you know, people recognize each other? In the akramakum in the layat kakum. But these things are not the basis of honor and respect. Verily, the most noble and the noblest one amongst you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most pious, who has the maximum fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has the maximum regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who keeps within the limits of the Sharia to his maximum utmost. He is the most respectful. إِنَّمَا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything and He is aware of everything. Now here, let me quote, Edgy Wells, who is very famous as a scientific fiction writer, he has written two books on the history of the world, the short history of the world 
and a concise history of the world. And he has criticized Muhammad Sallallahu like anything. Due to this polygamy, because this they can't swallow, it's a bitter pill, you know. The Westerners can't anyhow accept it. And so other things. Just like Salman Rushdie, he has criticized bitterly. But in the end of the chapter, in the concise history of the world, he quotes from the sermon of the last Hajj. لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي ولا لأحمر على أسودا ولا لأسودا على أحمر إلا بالتقوى كلكم بنو آدم وآدم من تراب There is no superiority for any Arab over any non-Arab In the same way, no superiority for any non-Arab over an Arab No superiority of some white over some black In the same way, no superiority of any black over any white But with taqwa on the basis of taqwa and nothing else. Kullakum banu Adam. You are all progeny of Adam. Wa Adam min turab. And Adam was created out of clay. And then he says, these words you must remember. Although the sermons of human fraternity, freedom and equality were said before also, we find a lot of such sermons with Jesus of Nazareth but it must be accepted that it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who for the first time in his human history established a society based on these principles. Human, fraternity, equality, all these things. Freedom. On these principles, the first ever society established in the world throughout human history was the one established by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there is a note of caution. You know, this note has been removed from the new edition of this book, Concise History of the World. But you can go to some older edition and find the quotation. Lest you sh should go and see the, the new edition and then you will have, you will doubt, you know, my integrity. So you must you will have to refer to some older edition of the book, Concise History of the World by H.G. Wells. Surah Al-Hujrat, although it's a comparatively small surah, comprising of only 18 ayat, but this is the most important surah of the Quran, regarding the basic principles of Islamic polity, basis of Islamic society, basis of Islamic state, the constitutional basis of Islamic state, the emotional basis of Islamic society, how to keep the Islamic society coherent, united, and then finally, what is the basis of membership of an Islamic society or, so to say, citizenship of an Islamic state. Now, let us review, have a brief review. First of all, we had ayah number one. This is sufficient, one ayah, as constitutional basis of Islamic state. Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday allahi wa rasoolihi wa attaqu allah inna allah samiyun alayhi. If you accept, and it is put down in the constitution of a country, that the sovereignty here belongs to Allah. And how will it be implemented? That no legislation can be done here at any level which is repugnant to the book of Allah and the practice of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This one article is sufficient to make any state Islamic state. Luckily or unluckily we have these articles in the constitution of Pakistan. The objective resolution now is a part of the constitution, Article 2A. Sovereignty, it says, belongs to Allah, not to us. And then the Article 227, no legislation can be done here, the pregnant of the kitab, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger. But there are loopholes, these are not operative fully. Theoretically, 
the all the requirements of an Islamic constitution are fulfilled by these two articles of the constitution of Pakistan. If they are fully operative, this is sufficient. Then number two, for a coherent society, you must have some emotional center also. You know Allah is beyond our perception, beyond our conception, but something about which we can feel. And that becomes a center of our love. All people love Him. Then you know the whole society will be coherent, strong, united. This emotional requirement of Islamic society is completed by the person of Muhammad Respect for him, love for him, adore him, because it's a very subtle thing, you know, try to understand. We can't have a community of feeling with Allah. How he feels, we can't say. But we can have a community of feeling with Muhammad How he might have felt when the dead body of his uncle, Hazrat Hamza, came before him. Can't you imagine? Can't you feel it in your heart? How he must have felt when his daughter came to him. See, Father, no, because I bring water from the well, there are these stripes on my shoulders. And because I have to grind flour, and there are, you know, there are these things in, in my hands. So please give me some slave or, or some slave girl. He can very well understand what would be his feeling. But he said, no, daughter, these things are not for us. So here we can have a feeling, feeling. This type of feeling we can't have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Baraul wara, summa baraul wara, summa baraul wara. So love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love him, follow him, imitate him. Not only obey him. Obedience to Muhammad is the part of the first article of constitution. The book of Allah and the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here it is not obedience, it is following. It is love, it's respect. So that is actually the center of the Muslim society. Then we had eight commandments to keep this society coherent, united, strong. There should be no cracks in it. Two are major commandments. Number one, never take any decision merely on rumors. Must look into them, must investigate, and then take some step. Number two, where there is some dispute among the Muslims, don't take it lightly and don't feel indifferently. It's your duty to make peace between them. Lift the evil in the bud. And if one party is transgressing and adamant, then now it is not a case between two parties of the Muslims, but one party pitched against the whole Ummah. Fight them and force them to bow before the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are two very major commandments. Then six smaller commandments. At individual level, the bond of love between two Muslims can be broken. Three of these things are which are done in the presence, face to face, laughing at each other, assigning some blame to each other, calling someone by some nickname which he dislikes. These things are done face to face. So that ayah, لَا يَسْخَ قَوْمٍ مِنْ قَوْمٍ أَسَا يَكُونُ خَيْرًا مِنْهُ وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِنْ نِسَاءٍ أَسَا يَكُونَ خَيْرًا مِنْهُ Then three things are done in the absence. Suspicion without any basis. اِشْتَلِبُوا كَسِرًا مِنَ الظَّرْمِ إِنَّ بَعْضَ ذَنِّ اِسْمُونَ the spying at each other, what is happening in the home of that person? What to you? The spying, you know, to know. Why? If something bad comes to your knowledge without your intention, try to cover it. Not to discover something, you know. That's not good. And number three, backbiting. So six, I say, 
comparatively smaller commandments and two major commandments. Then was the ayah, is this society or state absolutely separate from the rest of the humanity or there are any links between this society or state on the one hand and the rest of the mankind on the other? Answer is yes. All human beings are, number one, created by one God. Unity of the Creator. And all human beings are the progeny of Adam and Eve. One pair of human beings. So there is a fraternity, a brotherhood at the level of human beings. So, an Islamic society, an Islamic state can have brotherly relations with other states, other, other societies who are not actively engaged against the Islamic State. If there is some active engagement, there is a separate matter. You can be generous to the mankind as a whole. No good to them, no harm. You shall find it in Surah Al-Mumtahina. Because after all, they are your brothers. They are also the progeny of same Adam and Eve. And Allah is the creator of you and also them. Now the last, and this is the most important issue regarding an Islamic state or a society. What is the basis of membership? Now there are two terms, Iman, Islam. Generally these two terms are used as synonymous. Iman, Islam, Islam, Iman. No difference. A moment is a Muslim, a Muslim is a moment. Generally, in Quran, at most places, these words are used as synonymous. But there is a big difference. Iman, real Iman is in the heart. You cannot verify whether it is there or not. There is no electrocardiogram <laughs> up till now which can tell you that there is Iman in this heart or there is none. So it cannot become the basis of a society. Basic of society is Islam. Islam is based on five things which are external. If somebody says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, number one. And then four modes of worship. If they establish, well, he is a Muslim. He might be a spy. That's whoever he is. When he is caught, you can punish him. Without any reason, without any proof, you can't say you are not a Muslim. And the basis of the membership of Islamic society is Islam, not Iman. Now to make these two things separate, this ayah starts. These Bedouins are claiming that we have come to believe. Tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have not at all come to believe. All you may say is that you have submitted, you have surrendered, you have started obeying. Aslamna. You have become Muslims, not Mormons. Because up till this time, Iman has not entered your hearts. Iman at the tip of the tongue. These are words. These are words uttered by their mouth. Whether someone really convinced of, of these things, it's absolutely a different story. Whether this conviction has entered his heart, reached its bottom, depths of the heart, it's a different story altogether. A world of difference between them. Now who are those people? When after the Treaty of Hudhabiyah, it was the general impression in the Arabian Peninsula that, that now Muhammad is the superpower in the Arabian Peninsula. If even the Quraysh had to conclude a treaty with him, who else can oppose him now? 
So now there was a movement. The tribes, you know, they consulted within themselves. Okay, now we should go and we should accept Islam at the hand of Muhammad sallallahu Now a delegation has come and the whole tribe is accepted in the fold of Islam. But does it mean that in this way Iman has entered the heart of every Muslim? A collective, a collective decision taken at a tribal level, but they are accepted as Muslims. When they said we have, we have come to believe, now, no, no, no. Here you are wrong. Don't think you are falling short of something up, up till now. You are Muslims, we accept you. But not Mormons. Up till now, Iman has not entered your hearts. Islam also entails obedience. If you keep on obeying Allah and His Messenger, Allah will not diminish anything from your rewards of your deeds. He is generous. In Allah, Ghafur Rahim, verily Allah is forgiving and merciful. Logic would have said that because Iman has not entered their hearts, no deeds of theirs should be acceptable. A person is praying and you say the Iman has not entered your heart. Should this prayer be acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Logically answer is no. But because Allah is forgiving, Allah is merciful. He has given you this concession. Unless you are deceiving, that's a different story. Then you are a munafiq. If there is no intention of deception, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your obedience. But now, if you want to know who a true mu'min is, it's the natural sequence. When you tell somebody, well, you are a Muslim, not a Mormon. Don't think you are a Mormon. Naturally, he should ask and tell me, what are the prerequisites of being accepted as a Mormon? So this is the sequence here. This ayah number 15 is the most important ayah of the Quran on this subject. Who is a true Mormon? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَّاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Verily, the true Muslims are only those who believe in Allah and His Messenger. Then they don't have any doubts. This belief reaches the level of conviction without any thorns of doubt. And what would be the outward expression of this conviction? Jihad fi sabirillah. And strive for the cause of Allah with their belongings and with their lives. Only such people are true if they claim that we are Mormons. This is jihad fi sabirillah. For Iman it is essential. This is the definition, a comprehensive definition of who is a moment. Two integral parts, faith in the heart, reaching the level of conviction, and jihad in action. What are the five pillars of Islam? Iman at the tip of the tongue, shahada, and in action, salah and psalm and zakah and hajj. Muriyal Islam wa ala khamsin. Shahadat Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah wa iqami salati wa itahi zakati wa sawmi ramadana wa hajjil bayt. But to be a moment, in addition to these five pillars of Islam, you have to have two more pillars. Iman not only on the tip of the tongue but also in the heart. Yateen in the pulp. And over and above salah and sawm and zakah and hajj. Jihad fi 
Now these become seven pillars of Iman. Five of Islam, add to it these two pillars which are given here in this ayah number 15. So this is, in this respect, the most important ayah. And we shall be reading now, when we go through Surah Hadith, Surah Saf, Surah Munafiqun, Surah Taghabun, these subjects will become clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. But this is the basis. Say to them, do you want to inform Allah of your deen? Now because they didn't have real iman, but they wanted to say, oh, oh Muhammad, we have accepted Islam without fighting. So, so we should be given some preferences. You want to apprise and inform Allah of your deen? Wallahu ya'lamu ma'afi samawati wa ma'afi al-lard. Whereas Allah knows already what is there in the heavens and the earth. You need not tell him. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. And Allah is knower of everything. Yamunnoonu alayka naslamu. They are saying as if they have done some favor to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we have submitted and we have become you know, Muslims, without fighting, without resisting. Say, don't say that it is a favor that you have done to me, that you have accepted Islam. On the contrary, Allah says that He has favored you. وَلِلَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكَ عَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ that He has guided you to Iman. When you have entered Islam, now you can reach Iman. This Islam is the gateway. Now if you go on praying, you are going, you are fasting, you are reading Quran, you are reciting Quran. So, so gradually, 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 this Iman will creep into your heart. Go down and down and down. So you are at the threshold of Iman. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you this blessing that you have become Muslims. In kuntum swaditeen, provided you are truthful. Maybe you are deceiving. Maybe you think that there is no use resisting now. We shall wait for some later time. Maybe there is some other time to strike. Try to strike to stage a counter-revolution. But at this time now, we can't do anything. We have to surrender. But waiting for some time, some chance, some occasion to rise up. If this is the intention, then you are monafiqeen. If this intention is not there, without any intention to deceive, you have accepted Islam, Islam is accepted. And this is actually your first step towards the road to Iman. وَلِلَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ وَالْحَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْمَرْضِ Very real, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all the unseen of the heavens and the earth. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is seeing what you are doing. 